Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started with our uh, next fireside chat, all about building a sustainable indie content ecosystem with technology. And I do hope all of you managed to enjoy your lunch, enjoy some conversations with your peer members, got to network, connect with the speakers, all that and more. And while the parallel tracks are on, the track A sessions are taking place right here. So without any further delay, let's get it started. Now, to spearhead the session, we have with us once again, Mr. Vivekanand Pani, co-founder, Reverie Language Technology. And uh, to sort of share the insights around this entire sustainable indie content ecosystem, we have with us once again, Mr. Rajesh Kalra of uh, Asianet News Media and Entertainment. So I know we are already energized with some good lunch. Let's convert that into an energetic round of applause. Let's bring that energy back in the air. And let's uh, deep dive into this very important session. I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Pani to spearhead the session. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, After lunch is always the worst time to have a session. I sometimes feel sleepy even without lunch. I don't know what happens after lunch. Please. Sure. OK, so yeah, the post-lunch session generally can be very boring. Uh, we'll try to make it interesting. Let's see. Uh, uh, the content or building sustainable indic content ecosystem with technology is a very important subject uh, in our country where about 70% uh, literacy uh, we, we, we mentioned and uh, with English literacy being about 7%, we have about 63% people who can read and write, but practically with no content that they can engage with on the digital media. So what exactly has been holding us back? In a previous session, uh, you know, I was also trying to mention uh, that uh, uh, although the internet came to India in 1995, until about 20 or 25 years later, you know, most of the Indian languages were not supported on the mobile devices. That would mean that one cannot browse, send messages, or uh, you know, read content. So that, that itself can be a huge uh, uh, roadblock in making uh, content grow. So why, why has that been happening? So I would like to ask uh, Rajesh. So you've been in media, and uh, uh, you've been in uh, publishing as well. So what exactly are the challenges that you have faced, and uh, what are the things that you have tried? So as you said, uh, you know, we started with internet in 1990s. But for a long time, internet only meant in English which also meant that almost 90% of the population of this country had nothing to do with it because they don't speak English. That is still the case. I'm talking about English, not about internet. Over a period, of course, the, there was a lot of effort which was put in. If you remember when we started as a publisher, there was no CMS which could do anything in English. In, in any Indian language, fonts were a problem. They would appear as junk character on most of the places. Till Mangal font came, Hindi was not a problem, no, not, not something which was possible on uh, internet. You had to download things. It was such a, such a chore, it is still a chore. Over a period, things have started getting better, but they are not even close to what we are able to do in English. Content availability is a problem. Their translation is a problem. Same content will appear different on different devices. You know, you know leave alone that. Android and iOS have different uh, way in which it uh, renders. Matrai go here and there, whichever language you look at. Input devices have not been the same. There is standardization in most other languages except Indian languages. You don't have a single keyboard which will say, OK, this is the Devnagri keyboard. All of you must follow this. There is nothing like a QWERTY keyboard. These are the issues which we have deliberated and discussed as part of the uh, uh, you know, uh, committee which is there for languages. You are a part of it. I would rather ask you, what are the challenges 
that you are unable to give us all these things? Okay, question comes back to me. Hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, I have seen the evolution of Indian language technologies in the computing or the digital medium uh, over the last two and a half decades. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's precisely the period that, you know, internet and digital devices have been evolving in our country. And uh, so partly I would say that, yes, we are to be blamed, that we haven't been able to create enough technologies. But I would also like to give a little bit of history, you know, uh, uh, the audience will probably enjoy this, that Indian language, like you mentioned, the standards, etc., uh, they actually existed since the 1980s. The first efforts in creating, you know, uh, the standards and technology to be able to use on computers began in IIT Kanpur in the 1970s. The first integrated Devanagari computer was demonstrated in the 1983. But, uh, and Bureau of Indian Standards released what we call the first Indian script standard called ISCI, Indian Script Code for Information Inter Interchange in 1988. So that is much before internet came to India. And in fact, when I was still in college, Indian government had started issuing voter ID cards and was storing voter ID databases in native languages alongside English. So all of that was already happening at, you know, at, at the scale of India, that's really large. But unfortunately, when you know, internet came, all the work that we had done did not make it to the internet. And the because reason for that? Sorry? And the reason for not making yeah, it? I'm just trying to come to that. You, you partly mentioned some of those issues, right? You know, you had issues with fonts, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just coming back to the reasons why in spite of creating standards, technology, everything in-house, or I would say in the country, we could not help our own internet because the internet still had international standards. The ISKI standard, which was an Indian standard, I think that took a really long time and was probably never accepted as a standard. The internet, you know, or the internet browsers that were popular, created by Microsoft, uh, Mozilla, etc., you know, they had nothing to follow. And uh, like you mentioned, the fonts, you know, the, so this has become a huge problem at the operating system level. That means fonts existed. People were, you know, the DTP industry and like I mentioned, the voter ID cards getting created and printed in native languages. So fonts existed, technology existed, but those could not be used in the systems of those times. In what kind of systems they could not be used? the systems that were allowing us to use the internet. Internet in those days was being ac um, accessed through graphic operating systems. And like the way that we understand Windows or Apple operating systems or Android today are all graphic operating systems. So in these operating systems, the architecture itself was created in such a way that language will have to be provided by the operating system maker. It has to be a service within the operating system, which means you may have all the technologies, but they cannot be used unless a Microsoft or a Google or an Apple is deciding to put that into their operating system, which would mean that they, they would in most likelihood not do it because India may not be their focus. It's not the highest revenue generating country for them in 1995. And therefore, you know, Technologies being there will still not get uh, make it. In, in a way, isn't the fact that 10% of the population, which is a very high number, speaks English a disadvantage for us because we started with English as an internet, whereas countries like Japan and China started with internet in their native languages, which also meant that most of the things which they perform legally would happen in their native language. Yes. What difference did that make? This is a very good question. So if we look at the computer itself, the keyboard that is accepted world over, 
is actually a QWERTY keyboard. Obviously, when we say QWERTY keyboard, it is designed for the English language. It has got 26 letter keys for those. And all the other languages that in, in, in the rest of the world that has been adopting this keyboard, anyway, try and make manage their languages over this layout. So the hardware itself was not designed for any other language, right? So, uh, but in countries like Japan and China or many other countries that emphasized native language and not English, there, the fact that they were not using English made the users feel that, okay, this device is still made for my language. Enough innovation went into at least creating it or designing the layouts easy enough for their languages. And people, when they start using it as native, they get used to it. Whereas in India, because the initial 5 or 10% people who were English first began using the internet or the computer, and all the rest, they had to look at them to be able to get started. So the impression that you get is that, okay, this is an English first device. Your language comes later. Today we already know that most people think that typing in uh, non-English native languages is more difficult than typing in English. And, you know, in a particular uh, event like this, somebody mentioned that if everybody has already started writing even WhatsApp messages in native language but English script, we should consider standardizing that. Now the debate was that would these people, given a choice, take a pen and a paper to write letters or write a poem of their own or write a little diary note, would they also pick English letters for native language? Probably no. They would write in their languages. So it is, a, it is the technology that has actually been creating this barrier. So I would say that, yes, the 10% Indian English speaking people becoming the first line of uh, recipients definitely has been. Uh, tell me, Vivek, uh, if all my professional, uh, you know, work, legal work, everything gets done in English, and all the people who take calls as far as the common man is concerned, they all are very good with English, even if they are, you know, whichever part of the country, as long as they are into some kind of this dealing, they are very happy doing this in English and they are comfortable with it. Do you think they don't even know the problems that a person who doesn't understand English has vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, people who do? Yeah, that's pretty obvious that they do not know. It's very hard for people to empathize when you yourself do not face a particular problem. It's a very interesting thing that you mentioned. Isn't this being discussed for about 10 years now, more, more than that? We have been discussing, yes, we are, hmm. for a very long time. But I think there is a reason why uh, it's very hard to empathize. If we look at our country, let's say if somebody has to apply for a job, any professional job, and there is certain qualification that it would call for. There is no qualification beyond class uh, 12th, right? So if you have to be a graduate to be able to take a job, you will be able to take anything other than, of course, the language or the literature in any language other than English. That means in our country, every professional already knows English and functions in that language. If that be so, if in their own daily functioning, they do not have the necessity or need to use their native language at all, it is very hard for them to empathize with somebody who doesn't know English at all and needs only the native language to be able to function. So looking at the publishing industry itself from, you know, the, when I was looking at all the languages in the Times and now here, we actually pay a lot more salary to our journalists who write in English. Hindi is slowly coming up, that's a fact, but rest of the languages is not the same. As far as revenue is concerned, we make a lot more money on English than in other languages. The other thing is, because the rest of the languages are starting now, relatively later, a lot of experimentation happens in the way the same information is shared in those languages than it happens in English. A lot of uh, innovation happens, and a lot of nonsense also happens, True. which we have seen. True. Revenue also, as I said, happens more on English. 
do you see all these re these things ever getting uh, reversed uh, sometime in future because you know you haven't responded to my question or when is it that i will start inputting things in the language that i understand with the same ease with which we do for english okay let let's try and address this fundamental question once again so let us say what kind of when you said that when i will be able to do it in my uh, languages similar to that of english so what kind of people will actually be creating this kind of content there will be probably two kinds ones that are actually doing it as a profession so that means the publishing industry itself which is creating content and probably printing because in india the print industry is much larger in native languages than the the digital media the other would be individuals like yourself and my i we would probably create our own blogs or contribute articles how exactly or what would we really need the print industry i have noted three things Pri print industry will require to be able to compose right so you'll be able you need to be able to type compose and then be able to proofread it and then once you have been able to do these you need to print that is all that you need now in trying to do these three steps you probably do not need internet you may be able to manage with any kind of a legacy software as well which is allowing you to do these three things as an individual if i have to do that then i will require composing like you did i will require then once i have composed i would like to publish it on the internet and i will hope that everybody will be able to discover and consume it after the doing that i will probably also like to share and promote whatever that i have written here comes the bottlenecks that if you try to search for content on um, in, in indian languages you will not be able to discover them appropriately if you are trying to read there are no fonts one device versus another mostly content if you have created probably you publish it in pdf formats though they are non unicode non standard and therefore not usable so these are the issues that have been there when will we be able to fix this like i mentioned much of that continues to remain gated at the operating system level are you not working with all the stakeholders who will make it all of us want to stand up here and say yes this is tamil is my language i can use it with as much ease as i use english you are given me a long story i still don't know when it will get there and who are the stakeholders and by when you think it can happen so uh, i have met many enthusiasts who work for creating technologies for their languages can they create a good search engine for their language the answer is yes can they create good spell checkers for their language so that you and i when we are typing we are, we, we can get great spell checking done in the, in, local, in, the, in the native languages native languages yes mm -hmm. grammar checking done yes beautiful fonts can be designed yes but when you look at the amount of font choices that are available today on any platform for english language there would be hundreds but for any indian language there would be two or three at most or maybe for most of the languages maybe just one like you mentioned mangal that was for devnagari but if you try try naming something for telugu so if that be the case with technocrats and skilled people available to create things if it is not making it there then obviously the gate is somewhere else which is what i am trying to make so the long story still comes back there that if you want to enable fonts you still have to go back to your operating system if you have to enable a particular language it will still have to go back to the operating system unless we are able to free that great technologies can exist but will not reach our language users you talked about you talked about uh, you know auto correction and all those things uh, voice recognition how uh, good is good are we at in indian languages right now so uh, yeah indian language uh, in fact uh, uh, because people perceive that typing is more difficult in indian languages a lot of reliance on speech technologies has become uh, has grown in fact speech technologies for english language existed long time ago it did not really have a great uptake 
but for Indian languages, it is having a much wider use because people find typing more difficult. But to answer your question, the technologies are great, probably for your and my language when we are speaking Hindi. But whether it is good enough for a Soro language, which is a tribal language, but still very popular, I'm not sure. When will it be? I can't say. Are there people who can make it? Probably yes. Which are the languages where you see uh, some significant progress has happened among uh, the Indian languages? So in India, uh, uh, generally it is like the louder that you shout, the wider that you are heard. So uh, Hindi is still you know, having the loudest voice because uh, large, you know, more than half the country's population is still able to manage with Hindi. But other languages are you know, deeply suffering. I would say the gap is very, very large. If you were to, so if you look at half the country speaking Hindi, and uh, that would mean the people who speak Japanese would be a fraction of that. Where do you see technology as far as it, the internet in Japanese language uh, and uh, in Hindi language? Yeah, it'll be very, uh, it'll be a, the wrong statistics. If we pick any of the top 10 Indian languages, in absolute numbers, we will have larger number of speakers than... I, I am referring to the technology and uh, how much progress has been made on fonts and ease of use and everything. Not only the number of users, obviously number of users would be far greater in India. Uh, I would say that uh, we are still harder to use uh, in all the languages, including Hindi. Okay. Than Japanese, Chinese, Korean, many other languages. Are there some technological challenges which are there with Indian uh, languages or it's a script or something, something more? See, there is also a lack of yeah. understanding. If you go and open uh, Apple phone, yeah. iOS, you know, you will realize they will talk of various scripts and it talks Hindi as a script. Right. It doesn't even know the difference between the language and the script. Right. Because I've seen it mention Hindi as a script, it's right. Devnagri. Right. So, is that their failing or our failing? Huh. It's probably both sides. We have accepted those and therefore they have been okay with. Uh, so, would Apple's QA pass a similar kind of a mistake for the English language? I would say no. So, if a device gets through with, uh, you know, so they used to have display issues earlier, now they have got translation issues, etc., etc., etc. So, I think it is both sides. So, uh, uh, I have been pretty vocal about this fact that, you know, uh, the um, large tech companies which control the majority of the services that we are consuming here in India in the digital mediums still have very little empathy towards the Indian native languages. That is because, you know, even if it is not good enough, they are able to make it through. And there are good technologies that still do not make it to the platform, they do not reach the Indian users. So as long as that remains, I think it will still be a challenge. So uh, you know, creating good content today in English language, if great content has been created, I think it is because people have been voluntarily creating. When they create, the process of creation doesn't come in the way of uh, somebody who is authoring. There are very good keyboards, excellent tools to help you ch spell check. You can indent your text, you can choose your fonts, you can make things very beautiful and then publish and be happy with that. You are sure that you can hashtag and things will get discovered. Search engines do a great job and so on and so forth. So all of that basically keeps feeding into the ecosystem. When we talk about our languages, it also needs that ecosystem. The urge to be able to create content and publish and also the urge for people to read is the same regardless of language. But unless we are able to create that ecosystem or are able to focus there, we will probably be struggling for quite some time. Anything else to add uh, or do you want? So, uh, yeah, on the publisher's side, I think there are certain platforms, you know, very recently I discovered one particular platform called Surujani. And, uh, you know, they had started in Tang Odia. 
And I asked them, you know, what exactly made you uh, look for this, uh, uh, creating this platform? They said that, you know, because we found that there, were, there are no contents you search, you don't find. People are there who are contributing, but that gets lost because they can't be read and so on and so forth. So we created this platform. So I think there are platforms that are coming up which are solving a lot of these problems where authors can easily create uh, good quality content. Those can be discovered. The platforms allow you to create you know, accurate and quality content. And then you, you are able to use all the modern technologies, including speech on those. Adoption of that becomes key. So the more that we ourselves try and use, uh, I think that we'll see better growth. Any questions maybe from the audience? I, I did have one question for you, Rajesh. Uh, so in, in, in uh, your own efforts, did you really try promoting Indian language content? Did you see traction out there? Uh, did you find that there were readers, but you, know, you weren't able to do enough, or it was the other way around? See, uh, as I said, if 90% of the people don't understand English, and you want to reach the rest of the country, it is natural that I try to reach out to as many Indians as possible, which is why we started in as many languages as possible. It was always a challenge initially. It was a big challenge initially. Now it is a minor challenge. But what has also happened is the pace at which you can generate content, if it is news, for example, in English compared to other languages. Just give you an example. PTI has a Hindi news service called Bhasha. I often found that my team would do the work far quicker than Bhasha would send its uh, report, simply because they were looking at the English report and sitting and translating it. Right. The team here could do it far quicker. Right. All those things are there. Things are getting better, as I said. It was far tougher earlier, you know, because you were fielding hundreds of, uh, you know, callers every day that, uh, you know, people will get very upset because the wrong matra means the word meaning changes and people will, you know, file cases on us. It doesn't happen uh, as much uh, now. But uh, also because I think the guys who specialize in these languages, they have become quite quick. But I am sure if they have the access to the tools which allow them to content, create content at the same pace as English or the Roman script, they would actually do wonders, not only for India, but for the world. And which is where I, am, I keep asking, you are, a, you are the tech man trying to help us. When is it that we are going to reach that stage? Yeah, so uh, maybe to uh, 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 you know, re-emphasize that one, I started off by trying to create the first you know, English to Indian language transliteration typing technologies, which eventually powered a lot of keyboards. And uh, you know, in those days, in the mid-1990s, there were a lot of publishers that were using our software to create you know, uh, and publish. However, you know, if we see that if great technologies could be created 25 or 30 years ago, and today we are still struggling with the same, it, it is obviously a bit of a shame. Uh, while on one hand, we know that you know, great technology can be created, it can make things a lot easier for us to use. But uh, uh, making it uniformly available across becomes probably the key. The one reason why most of the Indian legacy systems did not become popular is because it was not uniformly available. Whereas, even if you had a flawed uh, you know, limited set of fonts, but you know, a, a, a flawed typing system, et cetera, et cetera, but uniformly available. I think that has been the key that has at least proliferated Hindi to a large extent. So, you know, one good thing is that, uh, uh, you know, it's, the growth can be seen in Indian languages. English has almost, uh, you know, plateaued now. But why just internet, you know? As I said, it's very heartening to see when during the pandemic, when the newspaper's circulation plummeted, the real uh, rebound that has, has happened in languages, not necessarily in English. So there are more people who are happy to consume information and uh, news in their native languages. 
And as I said, internet is uh, growing very rapidly in rapid languages. Of course, uh, if we can make tools available which allow them to create content as easily as English, it will be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's right. So pandemic definitely accelerated the use of Indian languages because people, when they could not use things offline and needed to engage online and did not understand English, obviously the need for native languages has grown. And that is a great opportunity for us. There are some minor, I wouldn't say minor, but, but there are issues that if we look at, that can actually you know, help us grow, uh, grow uh, far rapidly. Once what we did is, we looked at Wikipedia, Wikipedia which is a very large uh, you know, content library, and we scraped all the you know, Indian language uh, content from there to make an analysis of that. We found out that about 93 to 98% of all the errors that were there were not because the authors were ignorant, but the errors were because the display system was bad, the fonts were confusing, and so on and so forth. So that, when you end up having that kind of a thing, then even when you search, you are unlikely to discover the right kind of content. It may be there on a respectable platform like Wikipedia, but you won't discover them. So, so pandemic has definitely you know, accelerated that people have been looking for, and therefore more creators are there, and so on and so forth. But if some of these problems are resolved, I think we will have a lot better engagement in Indian languages on the internet. Thank you. If anybody else has any questions for? Otherwise, the timer here says we have four more seconds. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, I do believe that, you know, it was in this conference many years ago where they said that the three Vs, video, voice, and vernacular, will be the future. We're actually part of that present right now, so thank you so much for bringing in your experience and your expertise with us, and uh, thank you. Never yes. refer to an Indian language as vernacular. You should okay. call it an Indian language. Vernacular is a pejorative. Why should you name, call your own language vernacular? I think that's a wonderful point and it's a wonderful takeaway from our languages. As well. We have to be proud of our languages. Call them our Indian languages, not vernacular. Brilliant indeed. A takeaway for me as well. Um, me as well. I mean, I come. I, I come from Andhra, from Kakinada. So when I hear the word vernacular as well, it seems alien. While that seems more like a conference tonality, I'm glad that I'm being corrected on that. Thank you so much, sir. I'm going to request both of you to please come together for a quick uh, photo op as well.